All right, so we got the white pieces and I'm going to start, you know what, let me play E4 and E5. Now I'm going to go knight C3. And those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know exactly what we're going to play. Vienna, but we're going to play it with the fianchetto on the king side. So G3, bishop G2, knight G2, E2, and just get to the middle game and play chess. Of course, we know the typical plans in the middle game and that helps. So let's see if we're able to implement them in here. Okay, knight C6, black pieces are just playing naturally just developing the amount of pieces controlling the center for us okay knight g2 e2 i'm not really i don't really care about them taking on c3 even if we get doubled pawns they're giving us the pair of bishops and we've talked about this now i did knight g2 e2 because the knight belongs here anyways in this system and we're ready we were ready to castle next d3 and get ready to play f4 so i'm gonna play <clears throat> Should I play d3 or should I play h3? Well, let me wait for them to see what they're going to do. Maybe they want to take here so that I cannot take with the knight and they get me doubled pawns. There you go. But when we talked about this opening, when we talked about doubled pawns, we learned that we also get benefits such as the semi-open file. So now I'm going to try to punish them through the b file. Also, it gives me more support in the center so I could play d4 in the future. Let's see what they play. And... Ultimately, if they castle, I, I, I wanted to play f4, f5, and so on. Now, queen d7, interesting. Do they want to get and go ahead and remove my bishop? Or they're just planning to castle to the queen side? Rook b1 is already taking care of putting pressure on the queen side. I don't think they're going to castle there. And, yep. Now, time to develop the bishop. Time to develop my bishop. Well, let me go let me go bishop g5 and the idea i don't really want to take on f6 but if they play h6 i might as well just go back and what i did is i provoked h6 which could be a weakness for me to put pressure after so they took here even easier i was more concerned if they play bishop h3 to remove my fianchetto bishop but i guess it doesn't make sense since my bishop is already pretty much blocked now look at this the typical plan for us is to play f4, pawn storm, just like in the king's Indian defense, and, and so on. And here it makes perfect sense. They're not castled to the king's side, but the king is in the center. And when the king is in the center, I need to get rid of these pawns so that I can attack the king. If they don't go to the king's side or stay in the center, they have to go to the queen's side, where it is pretty open as well. Not to mention my bishop is cutting them off right now. So pawn to f4. I'm not doing anything extraordinary. All of these... We've been talking about it over and over and over. So let's see how they deal with that. Okay, so they said that they just don't care. Now, f5 or pawn takes? Now, let me go f5. And I know I'm blocking my bishop, but all of you know the dynamics of this position. So I'm going to go back now to e3. If they go to the king side, I, I'm going to do what we've learned so far. In our basic strategy lessons, I've told you, Pay attention to your pawn structure. In our latest rapid game, it was the opposite. I was playing the collie. My pawn chain was indicating attack on the queen side. Here, it's telling me you have more space on the king side. Go ahead and target the pawn in front of your most forward pawn. So I should play g4, g5, and so on. Black pieces are doing the right thing. If I'm, be if I'm being attacked on one of the flanks, strike the center. But... What about this move? All right, I gotta go with it, guys. This is a check. And if they move the king, they cannot castle. So we, got, we go all in for that center. If they play g6, I am opening up lines as well towards the king. So let's see what they're going to do. All right. Time to go for that king. I'm thinking of even moves like uh, bishop h6. Does it make any sense right now? Okay, so let me go with g4. If they take, I could take back with the pawn, open up the file for my rook, or I could even take with the bishop if I wanted to keep things locked and my bishop active. But one thing is for, is for, for certain, now I think we have the initiative in this game. All right, d4, I could just take, knight takes, hmm. 
Now take or just move back. All right, let me take. I'm gonna undouble my pawns, and at the same time, I don't wanna keep wasting time. This is all about attacking that king as quickly as possible, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna be going back and forth with the same pieces. They're hitting f2, I mean c2, so now I need to determine. I don't think I wanna take, because they take back with a tempo, and I'm getting rid of, rid of pieces. If I'm going to attack, I need to preserve my pieces. Now, should I let them get the pawn or just improve my rook and defend at the same time? Let me take a look at, this is my first candidate move. Actually, one of my candidate moves, g5 is my other candidate move. For the sake of having three, bishop d4, but I just don't like it. So g5, they take on c2, I take on f6, they take on a 3 then take on f6 with fork, king takes, fork, if the king goes down, hmm, f7, queen h6. Okay, you know, I, I like this actually. So g5 or rook f2. All right, so I hope that you pause the video and try to calculate. I just did it one more time in my head. So they take, I take, they get a free piece. I take on g7, that's a fork. If they just move, I get the rook. If they take me, I continue with f6, only moves to go here or here. And at the very least, I get this knight. But I have I have also f7, I have check, and I collect the knight back. So I think I'm gonna go with g5, guys. Let's go for that king, and let's see what our opponent is going to do. But I already like my position. Now, of course, we gotta consider what if they just don't take on c2, right? One of the other things they could do that are concerning or pawn takes pawn, but then I think even f6 would be would be crushing. All right, so our opponent knows what they are doing, so they didn't wanna take on c2. Now, what should we do? I'm thinking, what if I take and then take, take, how, how is this gonna look for us? How is this going to look for us? G6 is, I, I don't think, I don't think I like G6. They could play H6. They don't have to worry about anything else. Even though this rook would be very ugly over here. But even G6, they could just take on C2 because I, I just cannot take back or do anything. Okay, so candidate move, take or go back basically. G6 is, is the other candidate move, but I just don't like it already, right? So let me take a quick look. All right, guys, so basically this uh, queen, eight, queen eight doesn't give me anything concrete and I'm still, whatever happens here, I'm still attacking that king, so I want to keep the queens. It's not really profitable to go to an endgame. So I'm going to go back to the one. Sometimes it's hard for us to make these moves of going from aggressive to passive because we feel like uh, it would be just taking away our advantage. But if you think about it, my queen is passive, yes, but so is theirs. This rook is not playing. The knight is passive as well. So it's okay to go back, regroup, and then go back at her again. So maybe we could play c3. We could play pawn takes followed by bishop h6. So... Let's see. Now, c3, I like it already. And maybe we transfer an attack now from the queen side. We never know. Um, also, I like this idea of d4, e5 opening up. Um, let's see. Let me start with c3. So, knight has to go back. And it'll be very interesting, very cool, if we started this attack on the king side like we did, and then we switched to the queen side. That's not that usual. So d4, pawn takes, pawn takes, would be interesting. Again, it's all about getting to that king. d4, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook d8, e5. Hmm. Even this move, or even this move, look at this, so many candidate moves. So I got d4, Queen a4 or queen b3, and I got bishop c1. Bishop c1. Hmm. Now, if bishop c1 
bishop a3, they could just go knight e7, so not a big deal. Not a big deal. Okay, so guys, we cannot go wrong with d4. We got pair of bishops, and the king is in the center, so it, it only makes sense to open up the open up the center. Now, we had to consider this move. Very logical. Now, do we want to play d5? Do we want to play get the queen out of that file? What do we want to play? Okay, let me go. I was considering one of these two moves. I'm going to go with... Hmm, yeah, I'm going to go with queen a4 because not only am I putting pressure on the knight, but I'm also putting pressure on a7. So it's not going to be so easy for them to remove the knight. And of course, if they take, I take back. This rook could join on the e-file. This is just really powerful for white. And when we review the game at the end, I want to see what the evaluation is here, but it has to be at least two two, three points for the white pieces. Now when I look, it's going to be the opposite, but all right, how about d takes e5? Okay, if d5, 97, so I could play d5 and then take on, on a7. Taking on g5 right away, knight f6, knight f n, then pawn takes, knight takes. Okay, bishop g5, knight f6, pawn takes, Knight takes. Queen a7. So many options, so many options. How about this check? Again, queen e7. Maybe we go back up. No, it doesn't, that doesn't look like the move. Now, just like I told you last time, when we were playing that collie, I told you I didn't know a lot about the position, but I'm following where we learned the basics. If our pawn structure was was aiming at the queen side, we play on the queen side here. I only know that king is in the center. So I'm going to keep opening up that center. So I'm going to go d takes e5. After, we're going to review and see what we should have done instead. But I like this. They cannot take with the queen. This would be hanging. They got to take with the knight. Yep. And now, of course, I need to do something about this. So I have this check, or I could just go directly to a7. Now, this check... No, no, no. Let me just take on a7. So now I got the pawn back. I don't think my opponent has any counter attack, counter play, not at all. These pieces are all very passive. I'm hitting g5. I'm hitting c7. So I don't think they could do a lot. And guys, even though I'm so focused on that king, trying to attack the king, if I get some significant advantage, like maybe a couple pawns, I'm just going to simplify everything and go to the end game. As simple as that. All right, knight f6. They just don't care, so I'm gonna take on c7. There you go. And you might be thinking, oh, why didn't they why didn't they protect the pawn? The thing is that if you look at it from black's perspective, let me go back here. This is pretty annoying, guys. This king seems like he's gonna get checked or checkmate at any time. So rather than defending pawns, they want to develop quickly to not get checkmated. So sorry for doing that. Let me put it back the way it was. We took on c7. And now I'm going to be up by a lot of pawns. Okay, so this has to be the move. I was expecting something like the other knight. But now I'm going to take then bishop c5. Bishop, c, bishop b6 is interesting because it comes with a tempo. And then bishop c5 check. e5, there's so many things going on here. Yeah, let me go with bishop b6 and i get the feeling that i'm playing too fast but this is pretty straightforward probably they saved the rook with a tempo but we could always get out of it with a check and now we're winning by two pawns we got one two three pass pawns so i go from tactics and attacks to just an end game thinking of that end game that i'm going to be way better but it's a shame it's a shame to go to an end game with the king still stuck in the center Everything is open. We got the bishops, my rooks. Everything is perfect for an attack. Let's see what we could do. Okay, so we figured that much. Now, should I go queen c5 check? Or should I go queen c4, cutting off the king, threatening to just play bishop c5? Queen c5 followed by e5? No, not safe. Okay, let me go... Queen c4. And it's so interesting. They don't even have this move because of our pieces defending everything. So now I'm ready to play bishop c5. 
they're going to have to give us material. Probably G6, they have to play, but then that would open the other rook. It's just not nice to play this as the black pieces. All right. They figured that they need to create some threats. Now, this I'm not concerned. At the very least, I just play H3. Now, how about my check followed by rook B8? Okay, now let's try to... Look, we've had a few powerful lessons on calculating checkmates in 5, 6, and let's see if we can do the same thing here. So I'm thinking bishop c5 followed by rook b8, right? So bishop c5, if king e8, we got, oof, we got queen e, queen e6, king d8, then check, king c7, and then this is mate. Okay, so I just calculated checkmate in 4, 1, 2, if they block I take, this is 3, and then four. Now, what if after bishop c5, they block with a rook? Um, okay, if I do this, 98. Then bishop e7, king takes, queen e8, I mean queen e6. They have to go back, and it's almost mate. No, 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 it's not almost mate. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. They have to go back to f8, and the queen is over here. I mean, this is completely winning at that, at that point. But do I have a forcing variation? So bishop c5, rook e7. What if I take first, then queen e6? Rook is always coming down, so they better go down here to block check we get to the same variation i mean i'm still happy with this h3 is gonna play or i could even take queen takes queen takes king takes and i got rook and bishop versus rook and knight and i'm winning by so many pawns so let me go bishop c5 and again everything is forcing because i don't want to get checkmated all right this is i think the easy this is the easy one okay do i want to do this one first if I go here, only move, and then this is mate. Okay, this is, in, I was calculating like mate in four, and it's mate in three, actually. Check, and then mate. That's it. Now, what did I calculate? I calculated this. Oh, okay, okay, and then this, and then mate. I mean, that one I like it better, but <laughs> let's go with a better move. Okay, so only move is to block. And then this is mate. There you go. All right, guys. Interesting game. Pretty sure we made a lot of mistakes and blunders, but at least um, we had a reason for, for every move. So 89%, not so bad. Let me go IC3. Okay, this is just what we know. Okay, see so here, mental note, H3 was more accurate. Take with the pawn. Again, we're not concerned. We get a pretty nice file for the rook. There you go. Bishop G5. Yeah, this was a mistake. It felt like it. F4. Now, F4, again, we know about this. Look at the pawn structure aiming at the king side. you got to target the pawn in front of your most forward pawn. So, F4. F5 didn't like it. Oof. Interesting. F6. Go back. Queen H5. Queen H5, G6. Yeah, so they're saying queen h5, they move the king, and then bishop e3. Now, what if g6 right here? Just to, just for the sake of calculating. f takes g6. If they take over here, then we go pawn to g7, discovered, and we get the rook. All right, so bishop e3 first. Now queen h5. g4, very good. So this means we understand what the position is asking for. So g4, pawn takes, knight takes. I'm glad that we made the right choice right here. g5. Queen d1, okay, queen h4. Okay, so my, I had the right idea. I shouldn't trade queens, but instead of going all the way back, stay on h4, because now you're threatening to collect on f6 twice, right? And if they take, then still your queen is active. This knight c2 is just a random knight on the queen side. So I should have considered queen h4. I, I didn't. So queen d1, c3, good. d4, all right. Queen a4. D takes e5. So here it seems like bishop g5 was more accurate, but 
But even with D takes E5, we're winning by two points something, right? Knight E5, Queen A7. I think this is when I told you, let's see what the engine evaluation is. And look, it's two points something, so I was not that far. Knight takes, Queen A7, Knight F6 mistake, we take Queen C7. Now, evaluation is five points something. Bishop B6, Bishop D4, interesting move indeed. But this one, we cannot go wrong with this one. Rook D7, Queen C4, apparently... Queen c5 was more accurate. No, no, no. Okay, I'm looking down here, and queen c4 is the accurate moves. No, queen c4, queen c5, about the same. Queen h5, check, mistake. Now, I thought that this would be... Yeah, yeah, okay, this is not checkmate, but I think we could have played rook b8, knight e8, bishop e7, king e7. Okay, instead of queen e6 right now, they're giving h3, and then what if the knight goes back? E5. Yeah, that's it, guys. This is just too much. It's not checkmate forced, but it's significant advantage. So my opponent goes here, and automatic automatically it's made in two. Or made in three more, right? So we went with rook b8 check, and then checkmate. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this opening, if you still play it, even though we covered it on lesson 34. And I will see you in our next video.